was masturbation part of purity culture? Yeah, I, the, yeah, it was. Well, the masturbation was don't masturbate. I, right. I remember being told not to do that, and I yep. was like, "I'm gonna do it. <laughs> right. I don't know what else to do." Yeah, and you don't want me to do this, and you don't want me to do that. So you've left me with zero options. And and you're not wrong. Okay. I mean, in the sense of that is the way that it came across. It's like all right, and especially like as, especially as like pornography became more more easily accessible. Mm -hmm. right through the social media age so now you're being told okay don't have sex okay don't watch pornography okay right. don't masturbate right okay what do i do right and but, but the the answer that they would give sometimes mm -hmm. was masturbate but don't lust while you're doing it which is right. impossible <laughs> yeah the and and I, I don't know if it's necessarily fully impossible but they're not wrong in the sense of the act of masturbation itself. And Lord knows I'm going to get responses on this one. But the <laughs> act of masturbation itself is not sin. Okay. The physical act. Right. Is not sin. But when lust is attached to it, lust of someone that you're not married to. Right. That's, that, that, it, yes, it becomes sin at that point. Well, then what do you do? You can't. Yeah, you can't do anything. Yeah, I mean, I so mean, what if I just what? <laughs> what if I just thought about one tit? Okay, because okay. that's all it takes sometimes. Right. Is that a sin? Right. Did I lust after a person, or did I just make up a tit in my mind, and now that's? I got gotcha. you. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I was, I would still say that's lust. Okay. okay. All right, but I think, <laughs> I, and I think especially in your teenage years, in your early and in your twenties, when it's really easy, when yeah, when there's a when there is because the reality is at that point there is such a strong, um, uh, physiological thing going on in in the right. in, in 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 particular males' bodies of actually needing a release mm. that it doesn't take like anything, right? <laughs> right. And so, and, but that's also why there's, you know, kids have wet dreams and those kind of stuff. It's right. like, they even said, don't have those. Either. <laughs> They're like, you thought about it while you were sleeping. Right. Therefore it's impure. Uh, like, what uh, are you talking uh, about? No, no, that's insane. See, because, that's where that's, it's like all of this stuff. And that's all you hear at church. Right. And it's like, okay, well, screw all of this. Yeah. This is all terrible. What am I? I can't. I, right. I can't do anything. There's nothing left for me to do. Right. And they're teenagers, so they're not smart enough to think about how else to fix it. <laughs> right. And it's just like, well, I I had to. <laughs> what do you yeah. want me to do? Yeah. No, and I think that that's and, and the problem is, you know, because even you telling me right now, that's still lust when you're masturbating, like that seems like too much. Like how are our parents supposed to to actually tell their kids that? Like you, yeah. You, like yes. But wh what do you? Okay, so what would what would you <laughs> what would you tell them to do? Like wh what what would what should parents tell their male children? Okay, I'm a male talking uh -huh. about this. Sure. What should parents tell their male children to do if they're not allowed to lust after? what you just said was a body part. Uh -huh. They're not allowed to lust after that while they're masturbating. What do they do then? Yeah. How do you, how do, what do you do? Well, and, and this is, I mean, to me, this is the complicated part, right? And the complicated part is, okay, well, two things. Well, maybe if I don't know. Because I know parents don't want to have this right. conversation. Okay. So in, I barely even want to have this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it's a real thing that sure. happens, and this is what pushes sure. kids all the way the other direction because you don't give them any options. Right. So, I, okay, I think one, first of all, in when we talk to our kids, we have to we have to let them we have to validate the fact that they're having sexual desires and sexual urges. Okay. I think when we when we go immediately to hey, I know as a you know whatever age you are talking to your child, so they're twelve or. 13, whatever it may be, you're talking to your child and you're saying, hey, I know you've got these sexual urges. I know there's these hormones that are rushing through your body, but just don't pay attention to those. 
just ignore them, suppress them. Right. Okay. I think that is starting the conversation off on the wrong foot. Mm -hmm. What I would say instead is, all right, you ha you're having sexual desires. You're having sexual urges. God wired you this way. All right. Right. So I'm validating the fact that what they're experiencing in their body is not wrong or evil. Okay. And I think both this is for I mean, this is for boys and girls. Right. I mean, I know it's easier for us to talk about it from the boy perspective because we're men. But mm -hmm. the reality is and this is one of the things that made purity cultural so horrible, too. It almost presented it like, OK, we know guys have sexual urges, but girls, you don't. Right, which is wrong. Which is absolutely wrong. I mean, just <laughs> biologically, physiologically, psychologically, just wrong. And I feel like parents had a harder time talking to girls about this Abs stuff and what they were actually supposed to do than boys. Yeah. And, and basically for the girls, it was like, all right, you've got to make sure you dress appropriately. Mm -hmm. Like, we're not, gonna, we're not even going to acknowledge your sexual desires. Right. We're just going to tell you... You've got to make sure sex doesn't happen. It's on you mm -hmm. to make sure sex doesn't happen or that lustful thoughts don't happen. Mm -hmm. So you've got to make sure you dress modestly. Because every boy at church isn't listening to any of this and they're all sexual <laughs> deviants. And, right. And, you know, right. their parents are terrible <laughs> and all that. <laughs> right. And so, yeah, so so you've got to make sure you dress appropriately. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're flirt. You know, when you if you flirt, don't it doesn't need to be any kind of sexual flirting or mm -hmm. hinting or, you know, and, OK, let's just don't flirt at all. Right. And then it's like, all right. And if you're if you happen to be dating someone, which you shouldn't be because you should only be courting. But if you happen to be dating somebody. <laughs> Then make sure that, okay, if y'all start kissing and he starts getting a little, uh, then. But never it's, kiss. Yeah, but you shouldn't kiss either. But right. if you do, make sure you're, you have, you're the one, you're in charge. You're responsible to push the boy off, to push mm -hmm. him away, to say no, mm -hmm. to ensure y'all don't have sex. Right. What a horrible, I mean, setup for these girls. You know, I mean, I mean and I, I think about it even like more so for them. Because they were told to wear these, you know, a purity, you know, get purity rings. You know, they go mm -hmm. to these conferences and they receive purity rings. And then I'm thinking to myself, all right, if they got purity rings and they have sex, do they walk around in shame, not saying anything while still wearing that purity ring? Because they so don't want anybody liars. to know. Yeah. So then they're just full of shame. Right. Or do they take the purity ring off? Now everyone knows. Now they're probably going to be ostracized. You put it down one finger. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it just, I absolutely hate it for the girls because it, it just, it set them up for just, I mean, to me, it just set them up for shame. Right. You know, and, and again, here's the thing. When I think, well, I, I think boys felt it too, but oh, absolutely. it rolls off more, I think. It, it does. Yeah. It does. And and almost because there's like this little, even in the midst of all this, there's this little kind of thing of like, well, but boys are going to be boys. Boys are going to do it. Yeah. You know, but girls, mm -hmm. y'all don't have to. Right. Girls, y'all keep those boys in control. Right? And I think that's so un unbelievably unfair. Um, and, my, and my wife was actually telling me that she was um, part of a uh, a purity retreat where they actually like role played how the girls were supposed to keep the boys away. You know, oh. you know, like what with other girls or with boys? It was all girls there. Oh, and but they were like role playing. All right, so when the you know like this is how you're supposed to basically like keep the boys away, right? And like like as and again, hey, can I? Put my penis in your vagina? Well, I, no. Uh, <laughs> definitely was not that explicit. Jesus said no. Oh, right. And so. Stop. No. <laughs> but I think. Ugh. Yeah. I, I And so. But all of these. You know, there's there was all these purity retreats. Purity. I mean, it was crazy. And again, I am completely for holding to. Yes. We need to have a traditional biblical Christian sexual ethic. But going back to your question of what do you, what does a parent tell a kid? 
that's what I was about to get, get back to. to. Okay. Yes. So we You didn't answer my question. question. Yeah. See? <laughs> no. So here's what I would say. <laughs> we aff- we affirm their desire. We affirm that there's urges. Okay. And what I mean by that is it's not you're not bad, you're not evil. God created you for this. Mm-hmm. Okay. Here's our understanding of sex as a good gift from God. Okay. Here's why it needs to be held in the bounds of marriage. Okay. okay. Now, listen. My guess is you if you're not already masturbating you you you've thought about it or you're considering or maybe you don't even know what that word means mm. right um but you know that you've already had a wet dream or whatever mm. right and so i hate that term so much yeah it's such a uh, yeah it's the stupidest <laughs> it's a well, thing that only christians talk about right because everyone else just masturbates and doesn't care <laughs> yeah so and so but to to, but just, to say ugh. But to say, listen, here's here's our understanding of masturbation. Mm-hmm. That masturbation is not a sin. <laughs> okay? And I know you've got problems with this because you're saying, <laughs> but how do you do it without lusting? Right. And I think that's the issue. Right? I, I, that mean, okay, so solve the issue. I, first, I mean, the reality is you can, I mean, I'm just going to be honest. I'm yeah. like, listen, it's it's going to be hard as hell. Okay. But I'm asking. I mean, you, that's what that's how it works. <laughs> it gets it gets 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 pretty hard. <laughs> oh, I knew it as soon as I said it. I knew I'd walk right into it. Okay. Oh Lord, help us all. Okay. All right. Answer the question. Yeah. And so, I mean, for me, I'd be telling you know our kids, but but we don't want you to entertain lust because we don't want you to objectify the opposite sex. Okay, well, just to be honest, that sounds awful. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's that, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. It's it's awful in particular in our day and age when marriage is put off for so long. 